Cleary presents a unique look at Northwest Arkansas with music, interviews, drama, and personalities. And now, here's Mike. Hello, I'm Mike Cleary, and welcome to Mike Cleary Presents. One of the things I love to do when I'm walking the dog in the evening or just sitting in the dark, enjoying the quiet, is to gaze up at the night sky and wonder about all those tiny twinkling lights. When you look up at the dark sky at night, and if it's clear enough, you can see billions of stars. Some of the stars seem to be a part of a group, like the easy to spot Big Dipper or the three bright stars that make up the belt of Orion. Centuries ago, long before the internet, before the invention of television and radio, even before we had books to read, people would tell stories of their myths and legends and they would relate them by using groups of stars that we call constellations. Some of these constellations are associated with the signs of the zodiac. The word zodiac comes from the Latin form of ancient Greek meaning circle of little animals. In this presentation of Mike Cleary's Night Lights, we'll take a look at that circle of little animals and explore how those groups of stars known as the Zodiac. The Zodiac is comprised of 12 constellations that are prominent in the night sky for about 30 days each. They're seen almost directly overhead following in the path of the moon. People claim that the star sign that you were born under influences the type of person that you are and the personality traits that you may have. Like when people say, you're a Leo or you were born under the sign of Pisces. What exactly are these groups of stars that we are born under? Where do they get their meaning? And how did they come to get their names? Well, there are 12 members of the Zodiac, so that explains a little bit about the history and significance of each one of them. Our first constellation of the Zodiac is Aries the Ram. Aries is prominent in the sky from March 21st to April 20th. People born under the sign of Aries are said to be ad adventurous, <laughs> energetic, and enthusiastic. Aries the ram is typically attributed to the ram with the golden fleece of Greek mythology. This magical treasure was sought by Jason and the Argonauts as a cure for any injury. While trying to obtain the, the fleece, Jason was thrown into an immense labyrinth by King Minos and was pitted to battle against the dreaded Minotaur, a beast with the head of a bull and the body of a man. Jason was assisted by the king's daughter, Ariadne, who fled with Jason and the fleece aboard his ship, the Argo. Somewhere along the journey, Jason abandoned there in Ariadne, marooning the poor damsel on a deserted island. The gods took pity on her and placed the princess in the sky as Corona Borealis, a small ring of stars also known as the crown of Ariadne. Our next sign of the zodiac is Taurus, the bull. Taurus can be seen in the sky from April 21st to May 21st. Several of the stars seem to be making the horns of the bull 
and the brightest star is in the face of the bull. The star is called Aldebaran, and its Arabic meaning is the eye of the bull. People with Taurus as their star sign are said to be patient, warm-hearted, and loving. Not bull-headed, but more like Ferdinand the bull, who was docile and gentle. Taurus the bull is supposedly named after the bull that the Phoenician maiden Europa rode on, on her journey to Crete. In doing so, she brought civilization of the ancient Near East to Mediterranean Europe. The constellation Gemini is also known as the Twins. It is named after the twins Castor and Pollux, who were born from an egg laid by Leda, Queen of Sparta, who had been wooed by Zeus, the king of the gods in the form of a swan. Pollux was immortal, but Castor was not. Castor was an excellent horseman and proficient at fencing, and Pollux, or Polydeuces, was famed for his boxing skills. The twins joined Jason on the Argo in his quest for the Golden Fleece, and when Castor was tragically killed in battle, Pollux pleaded with Zeus to bring him back. Zeus agreed to immortalize both Castor and Pollux if they spend half their time on Earth and the other half amongst the stars in the heavens. The constellation Gemini can be seen in the night sky from May 22nd to June 21st. Those born under the sign of Gemini are considered communicative, eloquent, and intellectual. Our next constellation is Cancer the Crab. Now supposedly, this is the crab that attacked Hercules while he was busy fighting the seven-headed hydra as one of his 12 labors. Well, why did the crab take the side of the hydra? Well, maybe they were good friends, I don't know. Actually, according to Greek mythology, Hercules was despised by Hera, the queen of the gods. As Hercules was battling the multi-headed hydra, it appeared that Hercules was getting the upper hand. So Hera sent the crab to bite Hercules on the foot in order to distract him. Hercules killed the crab and defeated the hydra. Well, Hera felt sorry for the faithful crab, so she made it into the constellation Cancer the crab. But because the crab was unsuccessful, in its mission to thwart Hercules, Hera made the constellation very faint in the night sky. Another version of the story was that Hercules was so angry at the crab at it for t attacking him, he kicked it so hard it landed up in the sky. Cancer can be seen from June 22nd to July 22nd, and those born under the sign of cancer are emotional, intuitive, loving, and protective. Leo the lion is named after the lion who came down from the moon in a meteor shower and laid waste to the forest of Nemea near Corinth. The Nemean lion was defeated by Hercules as another one of his 12 labors. And this sign reigns in the sky as Leo the lion. A meteor shower occurs from the stars of Leo every 33 years or so. Perhaps this meteor shower inspired the ancient Greeks with the story of the lion who fell from the sky as a shooting star. Leo the lion is prominent in the night sky from July 23rd to August 21st. And those born under the sign of Leo are said to be generous, broad-minded, and faithful. The constellation Virgo can be seen from August 22nd to September 23rd. Those born under the sign of Virgo tend to be modest and shy, practical and analytical. 
The maiden of the Virgo symbol is Astraea, the star maiden, goddess of innocence and purity. That's only one of the various Greek myths behind Virgo. She's also linked to Libra as the goddess of justice, who once carried a pair of scales with which she weighed up the rights and wrongs of any dispute. Now, Astraea represents natural law, not the human understanding of justice, as found in Libra. She upholds the balance of the seasons in living with accordance with nature. The goddesses associated with Virgo are thought to be fertility goddesses, or goddesses of the harvest, which ties in with the Greek myth of Demeter, Greek goddess of the harvest. The constellation Virgo is thought to be of a woman holding a spike of corn, also resonating with the harvest mother myth. Libra the scales were originally part of the constellation Scorpio as the claws of the scorpion was later made into its own constellation, the scales, and it is the only constellation that is not a person or an animal. In Greek mythology, Libra is related to the Greek goddess of justice, Themis, whose daughter Astraeus went up to heaven and became the constellation Virgo. Libra represents a balance scale. The name may have come from the fact that the sun passes through the face of the constellation at the time of the autumnal equinox in September, when day and night are of roughly the equal length, so the heavens are balanced. Libra the scales is found in the night sky from September 24th to October 23rd. Those born on the side of, side of Libra are sociable, easygoing, and diplomatic. Our next constellation of the zodiac is Scorpio. Scorpio can be seen from October 24th through November 22nd. Scorpios are said to be forceful and determined, passionate and powerful. The scar stars of Scorpio sort of look like the body of a scorpion, with the end curling around like the stinger on the end of its tail. Scorpio was named after the scorpion who stung Orion the Great Hunter. Orion can be seen by the three stars in a row depicting the, sto the stars on Orion's belt. Now Orion was said to be a giant who was full of pride, and Orion boasted that he was the greatest hunter of all, even greater than the gods, and could kill any animal. Of course, the gods were not happy about this. Gaia, or Mother Earth, sent the scorpion to take care of him. After he was killed, Orion and the scorpion, who became Scorpius, were placed in the night sky. Centuries later, the two adversaries are still rivals, both sharing opposite sides of the sky. When Scorpius rises, Orion sets and dies again. Now this next sign happens to be my sign, Sagittarius. Sagittarius is prominent in the sky from November 23rd to December 22nd. Sages are optimistic, good-humored, intellectual, and philosophical. At least, I like to think so. Sagittarius is depicted as a centaur, which is half man and half horse, usually shown holding a bow and arrow. Centaurs were claimed to be the wisest of all beasts, and the ancient Greeks associated this one with Chiron, who was the teacher to gods and men. Chiron was skilled in many arts and scientists, instance. He taught his pupil Asclepius how to heal so well the physician could actually bring the dead back to life. Asclepius is usually shown holding a staff entwined by a snake, 
symboling how a snake sheds its skin and is renewed and, in essence, reborn. This symbol is often seen on ambulances and medical buildings. Hades, the king of the dead, was appalled that Asclepius was so skilled at healing that dead people were leaving the underworld in droves. So Hades had to put a stop to it and had the good doctor killed by Zeus. Chiron the centaur was honored and revered by the gods for his extensive knowledge and skills and was immortalized in the sky as the constellation Sagittarius the Archer. Capricorn is unquestionably one of the strangest creatures of the zodiac, with an upper body of a goat and the lower portion of a fish. According to Greek mythology, the constellation is typically associated with the forest deity Pan, who is a man with the head, with the legs and horns of a goat and the body of a man. Pan was placed in the sky by Zeus in gratitude for his coming to the other gods' rescue on several occasions. During the gods' war with the Titans, Pan helped scare the Titans away by blowing on his conch shell. Later, Pan warned the gods that Typhon, a monster sent by Gaia to fight them, was approaching. Pan eluded the monster by jumping into the river and turning the lower part of his body into that of a fish. Capricornus is still often depicted as a goat with the tail of a fish. The zodiac sign of Capricorn is prominent from December 23rd to January 20th. People born under the sign of Capricorn are prudent, disciplined, and patient. Aquarius, the water bearer, may be that of Ganymede, the immortal youth who poured ambrosia into the cups of the gods. In other stories, Aquarius is Deucalion, who, like Noah, escaped a great flood. Aquarius may be a very old constellation. Images of a man pouring water from a vase are depicted on ancient Babylonian boundary stones. The sign of Aquarius is from January 21st to February 19th, and Aquarians are friendly, honest, and loyal. Our twelfth sign of the zodiac is Pisces the fishes. This constellation is prominent in the sky from February 20th to March 20th. People born under the sign of Pisces tend to be sensitive, intuitive, and sympathetic. Pisces the fishes are actually the goddess Venus and her son Cupid. Frightened by the sudden arrival of the monster Typhon in the Euphrates River, the pair disguised themselves as fish and disappeared in the current. There are many more constellations to explore and many more stories about what the constellations are and how they came to acquire their names. You can find out more at your local library or by exploring them through the internet. The next time you find yourself gazing up at the night sky, see if you can identify some of the constellations of the zodiac. Maybe you can spot your own sign. The constellations of the zodiac are just a few of the night lights that folks have been wondering about since long before history began. I'm Mike Cleary. We'll be right back after these announcements. Be right back after a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Mike Cleary Presents. One statement that I often hear when I tell folks about the fabulous programs we provide 
on Bella Vista Community Television is, I didn't know Bella Vista had as a TV station. True, we may be small, but we have a viewership that spans all the way from Joplin, Missouri down to Fort Smith, Arkansas. Our shows can be seen on Cox Channel 222 and ATTU Verse Channel 99. Our recorded programs can also be viewed on YouTube. Our informative programs like Mayor's Rap, Let's Talk About It, and the POA Board and City Council meetings discuss timely topics that are important to residents of Northwest Arkansas. However, Bella Vista Community Television is not just for the residents of Bella Vista, Arkansas. We have art and imagination for artists, the gardening show for those with a green thumb, and in performance for opera aficionados. And then there's my two shows, Mike Cleary Presents and Happy New You, offering a little music, entertainment, and some thought-provoking messages. Bella Vista Community Television relies on volunteers to operate the cameras, handle the studio equipment, and host the various programs that you see here. If you are interested in becoming a member of our BBC TV family, contact our website at bellavistatv.com. You can also help expand our online presence by subscribing to our YouTube videos. We also need financial assistance to keep the lights on, replace antiquated equipment, and update our recording studio with the latest technology. If you would like to donate or become a sponsor of Bella Vista Community Television, go to our website and click on the blue Sponsor button. It's through the support and generosity of people like you that help keep Bella Vista TV on the air. On behalf of all of us here at Bella Vista Community Television, I'd like to thank you for watching our programs. I'm Mike Cleary. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us today. Watch our schedules for the next program or check us out on YouTube. This has been a presentation of Bella Vista Community Television.